What's up, YouTube? Welcome to part 12 of my Predator cosplay video series. Which today I'm going to be making the Left Gauntlet, which has a hinged opening to hold my cell phone so I can either do a bomb countdown video or just to hold it because this costume is going to completely cover every single part of my body with super hot foam, which I will not have access to pockets. So I would like to have a place where I could stick, you know, a credit card and my cell phone. Too, so I can take pictures of all the other awesome cosplays that I see and fanboy out myself. So this video I don't use any patterns. Some of the patterns I do use are from the previous pattern set. It's really just a whole bunch of rectangles and some hose. But I am going to upload the base patterns for left and right to Facebook for you guys. You can check that out and hopefully help you with this. And let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so first things first, I wrap my arm in saran wrap and then some duct tape and then I cut along the sides of the saran wrap and duct tape with some uh, scissors while I had my arm in it which produced these two pattern pieces. I made them slightly larger since I'm making this cuff out of half inch EVA foam. Uh, most of this build is going to be a series of rectangles seriously. So what this here is is a representation of my cell phone because my cell phone is going to sit in here to do the bomb timer countdown deal and just so I have access to my cell phone, since this cover, uh, this costume is going to cover my entire body, I don't want to have access to anything, and I would like to be able to at least occasionally take pictures. And that's how I plan on doing it, is having access to my phone through this gauntlet. So the first thing I did was I was messing around with my phone in this, and I already dropped it once. After that, I decided that was a bad idea. So I traced this out on some foam and made it the approximate thickness. This is slightly thicker, maybe about a millimeter or so higher than my actual phone. Shame on me, I guess. But... I'm going to use that as a representation. So first thing I did was cut a piece of foam slightly shorter than the length of this in a rectangle. Surprise, surprise. And then I placed my foam in the center of it and then measured <coughs> excuse me, a quarter inch on either side. And then once I was done with that, I tapered it slightly towards the front. It's not much, but it's slightly there. I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue this onto the so top. I glued this on the top. I did put my arm in this to figure out where to glue it on. I just didn't blindly glue it on, obviously, and make sure it was centered. And you'll notice that there is two strips of green foam on the side. Those are five millimeter as well, just like this blue piece. And that is so I can have a cover for this Velcro in the seam. And following the line of rectangle, rectangle, we have another rectangle. And I measured it to the length of this and put it on here so that when I glue it on this edge here, it will attach to the green piece on the bottom and this edge up here and will then act as a seam cover and the raw skeletal base for the bomb control box. So I glued on the side pieces using some contact cement, then I cut some pieces that were just a little bit taller than the actual funk uh, itself, not by much, but a little bit, and so more rectangles, and cut them to the length of this, two for each side, and then cut two on the inside. I then reinforced that with some hot glue in the corners, just to make sure it doesn't come apart. Yes, I am using sparkly, glittery hot glue. And, however, when I put the phone in, I do need to put a little bit of padding on the sides still, just to make sure it fits decently snug, so I am going to do that next. Alright, now that this is all essentially there, I took some half inch uh, EVA foam mat, and I laid this on top of it, and then I traced around it. What I was left with was the shape of this, however, I trimmed about the width of this foam off of one side. And the reason why is because that is where there's going to be a hinge. So I can open and close this. I'm just making a hinge, I'm not purchasing one. Now before I go on and show you exactly what I did, you have a couple other options. You could not trim this shorter, for example, and actually just go purchase a couple of door hinges, or maybe you have a couple of small, like, cupboard door hinges that you could use. Uh, as far as adhesive to use, I don't know, probably Q-part epoxy resin to get something like that to stay in place with an initial bond of super glue, I would guess, but I'm not, I'm not sure. 
and I'm not doing that. Another option could be taking some polypropylene or nylon strapping and contact cementing one end of it to here and the end of it to the top piece and putting a couple pieces on so it would open and close. That's pretty simple. Or you could use elastic too, put a couple pieces of elastic, attach one end to here, the other end to here, so it just kind of rotates like on a hinge. But what I'm actually doing is I took a old number two pencil and a piece of steel wire. This is about the thickness of a coat hanger. So you could probably substitute a coat hanger for this if you don't have wire lying around. This wire was scavenged and donated to me, so I didn't perch somewhere. So, yeah. And this is part of a number five pencil, mechanical pencil. I just took and sawed off one end uh, once I ripped it apart, the end where the lead comes out. I cut that off and stuck this piece of metal rod through it and then just bent each end. And I've already marked off on here where these are going to be inserted into the foam once I glue them in place. I'm going to go ahead and put all okay. this together. So I have attached my hinge. I glue this in first with some super glue. And then I put some two-part epoxy over it just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You could probably just use hot glue if you don't have two-part epoxy. And now that that's on, You'll notice that I have a couple of pieces of 5mm EVA foam, and these pieces are rectangles. And I glued those rectangles in there for two reasons. One is to cover the gap. The other is it acts as a stop. It can only open so far, and when it hits this, it stops. And it's at a nice angle and position. I like it. And after that, I cut down 5mm as wide as I preferred. And I'm going to put in a 5 millimeter insert that I will super glue into place. And then I will reinforce with hot glue on either side of the underside of this. And on the top, I am going to put some industrial strength Velcro. And up here, I've used my Dremel rather crudely and very uneven. But whatever. It's even in the way I need it to be. I use my Dremel with a sanding head to cut that groove in. And that is where I'm going to put the soft side of the Velcro. Okay, so I have the Velcro attached and all that jazz, and it is pretty tough. As it should be, it is industrial strength Velcro, but I'm glad I did not go in and pre-pad this with foam, because once I get my actual phone inside of here, it is quite tight. And the Velcro here kind of acts as a stopper to hold it in place. But I tried this both with this first and just shook it as good as I could while it was on my arm to simulate like the worst case scenario. Uh, used my actual phone in the case, which is much heavier than this. Same size, but much heavier. And yeah, it stayed in. It did not come out no matter how hard I shook it. So between the Velcro and that, I'm pretty confident that... I'm not going to lose my cell phone, but I will still have access to it whilst wearing this cosplay. Okay, so next, I took some 7 sixteenths, not to be confused with the 5 sixteenths foam, which has a similar pattern on the bottom, but looks bigger. I took it and I took my top layer 1B pattern from the right gauntlet wrist blade patterns, and I traced it out, but... I chopped off this entire bottom angled part here. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take this and on the back end of it to have it help come out and cover my elbow, I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue it with contact cement starting on the outside of this main piece here, curving it around and meeting up back here. Okay, so I glued on the piece from the right pattern set in the back, and then I traced out inside of it and cut a smaller one out of the 5 sixteenths uh, foam. And then I took and did a similar process in the front where I just lazily cut two half circles, one smaller than the other, and that helps to balance out the overall look of this so far. Next, I'm going to start adding stuff to this and basically gluing crap to it and doing some detail stuff. One of the first things I'm going to add is this tubing I have lying around. I'm going to cut it down the center here and in sort of a crescent on either side, glue that stuff on. Okay, I cut my tubing down the center and then curved off the ends here and I glued my tubing on and I glued it on in a manner that pretty much covers up that whole seam right there. 
which I hope so. I don't do any silicone or sanding really there. And then for the accent pieces, you'll never guess, but I cut out a long rectangle. I'm kind of sick of rectangles, so I cut it into three segments and then just glued it the same on both sides. And then here and here, the green pieces are five millimeter craft foam, and these were three millimeters. And I just cut two triangles and put one on the front and one on the rear to continue that plated look that the right gauntlet has. Now the only thing left to do is detail the top of this, which I've been bouncing back and forth. What exactly to do? Because the traditional one from the 87 has a whole bunch of squares and rectangles and other things, and I'm really kind of over rectangles at this point. But <coughs> I've been looking at several other ones from the Falconer, from Predators, and the Predator from Predator 2, and some of the other films, and trying to come up with something to do on the yeah, top of this. After much debating and looking at many, many photos, I just decided to use an X-Acto knife and cut some lines into it. Basically just some V cuts with a little swish on one side and slightly rounded on the other. I feel like that'll go much better with the aesthetic of what I've done on the shin guards and etc etc. The other gauntlet as well. And just the rest of the armor. Now I'm going to use my Drillmaster heat gun to heat this up and expand these as well as seal the rest of the foam. Because next I'm going to be masking off some of the Velcro areas etc etc. And doing a primer and seal followed by full painting. Okay, now I was careful to not heat up any of this plastic rubber hose because that will melt. Also, of course, the hot glue itself too will melt. But I just wanted to seal up all these panels that I attached and wanted to heat this. And now you can see it's nice and expanded, has a design on it, looks like plates, but it's not. I just cut something in it and heated it up. Before I go ahead and apply my plastic dip, there are several areas of this that aren't going to hold the plastic dip very well. One of those areas is the hot glue, for example, isn't the greatest. This definitely isn't going to want to hold it. It'll, with the scratch of a, of a fingernail, come right off. Same on this side. And this here as well is not going to want to hold the plastic dip in the slightest. It's just going to want to come right off. So I'm going to avoid getting it on those areas by masking it. However, well, I'm, I'm not going to mask this whenever I plastic dip and paint the whole thing. But this, I am going to mask whenever I plastic dip it. Because this, this is so smooth and it's just not going to hold it. Uh, the other thing is, I've been doing this new thing where I just like to have the inside and outside a consistent color. I started this when I read the Venom Mask mission and I would like to continue it. I forgot to do it on Carnage. Arg! But now that it's done, I can't go back and dye it all one color. So to turn all these black before I actually use a plastic dip, which may seem excessive, is Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric Specialty Coating. This has a rattle ball, looks like spray paint, comes with a cap that looks like a spray paint cap, but it's not paint, it's actually a dye. It's meant to be used on like vinyls, plastics, you know, synthetic carpet in your car, things like that. Uh, and it's not a paint per se, it's much thinner. And it absorbs directly into the plastic or the foam, whereas paint, yes, to an extent will you know, absorb it first, but then it hits a point where it stops absorbing and starts building up. And this stuff kind of doesn't do that unless you would just spray like a whole can on one thing. Uh, it is a dye and it absorbs into it. It's very thin. So I'm going to use this to dye both sides inside and out of this black. Right now that I've dyed both the inside and outside, that's black. I'm taking masking tape and covered up my Velcro. I don't want the plastic up on it, it will gum it all up. 
and I'm going to just use some black plastic to seal this up. Okay, so the plastic dip has fully dried and cured overnight, and I suppose it's not super important, but I feel like it's worth noting that I applied the plastic dip very thick on this end and the opposite end, and on the bottom piece as well. And what that did was give it a nice, smooth, solid coat. I applied it a little less thick here, and you can see it's very porous. And I applied it much less on the sides. Now, since the hose is already solid and even, you know, it's going to be nice and sheen, just like both these ends. But it gives it a nice contrast, the sides, the top, and both ends. So it almost looks like you took time to, like, I don't know, texture it different or put some kind of effort into it that I didn't really put into it. And, of course, I still haven't removed the masking from any of the Velcro on any of the pieces, just from the back hinge. Because next, I'm going to be taking some Wicked Colors, Createx Colors, Wicked Silver. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. Any airbrush silver will work. You don't have to use that. And... First what I'm going to do here is give it an even coat. Not thick and not totally solid. The black should still be uh, showing through. And then on certain pieces I'm going to go through and make them a little lighter and a little darker. Alright, so here it is all finished, and I can just pull up a video to put the bomb count down on it, and it fits in there nicely, and then of course, put the Velcro on, and it's there, shouldn't come off, at least I hope not, because if so, then there goes my my phone, I don't want my phone going flying, but yeah, that's pretty much it, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, I think this turned out pretty good for being something I didn't pattern and didn't have any time to make, because I have literally until next Saturday, which depending on when you're watching this, it will be totally irrelevant date to you, but from the point in time that I am now filming this, I have a week and a day, so I had to get this done because I still have to put the netting on the costume, which I'm hoping to do in the next couple days, so that the next video, hopefully you will see, will be me in the full Predator right, costume. That pretty much wraps it up for this right. video. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this gave you some ideas for your own cosplays, and I wanted to say thank you for helping me reach 2,000 subscribers. It really did help. And I've done Venom and I've done Carnage. I'm going to do probably as many of the symbiotes as I can. I just happen to like that aspect of the whole Spider-Man mythos. Even though a lot of them originally in the comics like Ryan weren't in it very long until they got kind of taken out. Although I'm pretty sure the symbiote did survive and get revived later, but I didn't actually read that story arc. But I did enjoy... Uh, seeing Riot and the version on the screen, so I'm going to do something like that in the form of a mask. And so yeah, let me know below what you think of that, and if you would like to see that. And I am also going to be doing a full reveal video where I will be wearing the entire Predator costume. But first, I have to put netting on all the fleshy parts still and a couple other things, so that video should be up shortly after this. But as always, thank you everyone for your support. I really do appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And feel free to subscribe it well as well. It really does help the channel. And leave a comment, too, uh, if you have any questions or any concerns or any interests. I am thinking about starting a new video series soon. It's not going to replace my build videos. I'll still try to put those out on either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I know it's not completely consistent, but some of these projects take a little longer. Some don't. But I try to get the videos up as quickly and consistently as possible. 
considering what I do doesn't have like an editing schedule or an upload schedule like that due to the, the nature of the project. Some projects take a couple days, some take a couple weeks. So, but I try to balance it out to get the videos out consistently. But I'm going to be doing one that's going to be focusing on certain aspects. Uh, the first one I believe is going to be on patterning and using patterns. And then from there I'm going to go on other subjects like heat forming and sanding and drawing and how I come up with ideas and things like that. And I'm going to focus on theory. Part of the point of this is to answer questions I get a lot of times in either through the Etsy shop or Facebook or Instagram or on here or just in a private email. It'll address a lot of those things so I can just direct you to it if you have those questions, but also so I can cut down the video time a little bit so the videos don't go quite as long and they'll be a little bit more fun to watch. Especially a lot of you out there that have been watching and seeing these techniques, I go over a lot of the ground at the same time. However, the point is, too, that if you're a first-time viewer, you're going to want to know that stuff. So if I'm going to slim that down in the videos a little bit, then I feel like I should have a supplementary thing as well. So as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.